imagine running for office uh, and getting elected to that office because you're from a state uh, where it's pretty easy to get elected. Uh, that's what Christy Nome did. She's a Republican, and if you run as a Republican, you got a pretty good shot. Although I might add this. Uh, Christy Nome got less votes than medic or not medical recreational marijuana did, uh, and she didn't exactly smoke or put a landslide into the election. So South Dakotans get a little something about Christy Nome. Now, let me add this: once she got the power of the governorship, once she got that seat, she's used every bit of it she can for her own personal use. There's no question about that. Susan Wismer has been a leader in South Dakota politics for a long time. She hasn't been afraid to stick her toe in the water and, in fact, jump uh, right in in the third end of the pool and, and let people know what she and others uh, are willing to talk about and think about when it comes to it. Uh, Susan, good to have you on. Uh, you served both in the House and the Senate in, in South Dakota, did you not? I did. I uh, was first elected to the House in 2008. I took, uh, I earned myself a hiatus in 2014 when I took on uh, Governor Dugard in his reelection campaign. And then I, uh, after two years, I came back in and served four years uh, in the legislature um, and was defeated uh, for re-election uh, last year in 2020. Yeah, that doesn't mean we're going to let you go without running again, just so you know. Uh, there's those of us that are going to do what we can to make sure you're back in that position. Uh, you, you know, that was kind of a, a, a Trump year and a Trump era in, here in the Dakotas. But let, let, me, let me throw this at you. If you were, if you had defeated uh, Governor Dugard and you found yourself in the position of a governorship, uh, would you have taken your family to Vegas? What if you just hopped in the plane and gone where you wanted at taxpayer expense? Because that's what Christy Nome is doing. Well, no. Uh, um, I'm not a, you know, that that's one of the, one of the things that that's the least of my problems with Christy Nome. I guess I'll put it that way. Okay. Well, let's go through them because more and more attention has gotten to Governor because she's put herself on a national platform. Clearly, she has goals way beyond the state of South Dakota, but she's used those tools like we just got done talking about to put herself on that platform. So, You've earned the right. I, I want to know what you think are some of the problems that Christy Nome has brought to South Dakota. Oh, I'm sad that the first woman governor of our state has so many positions unfriendly to women and unfriendly to diversity of all sorts and unfriendly to science and unfriendly to public education and unfriendly to basic constitutional principles like separation of church and state. So, uh, yeah, the, the, list, the list is long. Um, to say nothing, of course, of her personal approach to how she does business is just so different than what South Dakota is used to. Uh, she's, she's just definitely always inserting her, her personal self into situations that that governors before her would um, let let state government handle, but whether it's uh, her daughter with her appraiser certification or uh, going down to the state penitentiary to personally appear in front of the cameras to talk about the issues uh, down there, and then of course all her her travel all over uh, all over the the country. Um, None of it, none of it, I, I don't think, uh, reflects well on the position or on our state. You know, there's small little things. I, re, you know, I guess I don't consider hopping in the plane and using it for personal use as a small little thing. I get that. But, uh, you know, when, when you're sitting there and you, you know, there's a pattern and it's basically I can do whatever I want, whether you like it or not. I'm popular. This, this is what I do and what I can do. Uh, how do you break that cycle uh, when, when she is in a position that, quite frankly, you know, she's sitting there looking at, uh, you know, the ability to, with the, the popularity that she and her party have, 
to do what she wants. And I know that some Republican legislators and some others have really gone out of their way to, to say it, to, to have a problem with it, but they do it out of fear. I mean, when it comes to Governor Nome, it's like they're afraid of what she's going to do to them. Well, uh, you're kind of describing the Trump syndrome now and uh, what's happening at the national level. But I, uh, and yes, exactly the same thing. Uh, she's, she's act, she's got a Trump playbook. She plays all those issues that uh, have, have won points for Republicans at the national level. Um, and yes, absolutely. Uh, but it's that part. It's always been that way as far as uh, legislators are concerned and peer. Um, legislators who choose to take the money and the more certain uh, winning prospects of running as a Republican in order to get to the state capitol are always amazed at, at the pressure that the party exerts um, on them to, to vote the way they the party thinks they should. And Christy absolutely uh, uses that page from the playbook. So does she pay a price for it, though? I mean, does she pay a price for it? When, when you're sitting there and, and you're using nepotism to get your daughter certified to, to be an appraiser when she couldn't do that on her own, uh, when you're doing all of these things from using the, the state plane to go ahead and saying, I won't pay for the desk, but I want a great big desk that'll make me look good. When you're sitting there uh, basically flying all over the country back in, uh, rather than being back in South Dakota governing. Uh, you know, like I mentioned before we started, Christy Noem didn't exactly win by a landslide. I mean, Christy Noem, you know, Christy Noem didn't get some mandate in the election. And so you've got a pulse. I mean, you live in an area with vote Democrat, vote Republican, and you've got a business where both people come through the door. So what are you hearing? Are people tired of it yet? Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, whenever someone gets too big for their britches, you know, South Dakotans don't like that. <laughs> so there, there's a whole lot of that. But there's also, you know, I, I look at it as a minority party person and know that she has an awful long leash, uh, even though... You know, yeah, I, I've got to stick in the part about how, um, you know, she never, she wouldn't be in the chair she's in if Dennis Dugard hadn't called in the reinforcements from the National Republican Governors Association in the last week or two of that campaign. It was National Republican Governors Association money that put her there. And so I felt like she had debts to repay when she started doing that traveling. But yeah, she's carried the traveling far far, far past what I think the normal South Dakotan is, uh, sees as important to her job. Do you think she's running for vice president of the United States? I, I find it hard, that hard to believe. Um, I think the influence of Corey Lewandowski, you know, all the, the developments about the, uh, him in the last uh, week or two, I, I really do think it, it looks you know, from the outside like like he was having quite an influence. Uh, maybe he thought he had a good national candidate there. Um, I I guess it's possible. Um, maybe she's kind of like a Mike Rounds. Mike Rounds said, "Oh, I'm not interested in running for for the Senate." But when the national people put the pressure on and said, "No, you're the one," then then he volunteered or was was drafted yeah susan always good to talk to you uh thanks for your dedication to south dakota and you know your dedication to making sure things are done the right way i appreciate it <laughs> yeah well thanks for calling sorry if i don't always stick to the topic that you no, that no. you uh, have but um yeah there there's so much there i don't know how you do stick to the topic yeah. appreciate it yeah. susan